has gone through its bulk proofing stage, we're now ready to go into this next stage, which is the scale and dividing. So we're gonna make a little Vienna. So I'm gonna scale out 650 grams per loaf. By having the same weight in your loaves, it means that they will prove and it means they will bake exactly the same amount of time. We can't leave these like this. We need to put them into their pre-shape shape. So depending on what we do, we're going to make them uh, into either rounds for the Viennas and we're going to make little cylinders for the um, baguette. So just I like to put my loaf loaves onto wooden boards just so it helps protect the temperature of the dough. Remove any excess flour off your bench because this will start to change the hydration of your dough and it will stop you the dough from gripping to the bench. So all we want to do is fold it over itself. We want to make a nice round tight dough. Okay. All the time we, we mould from underneath, we never mould from the top. So using our hands, sliding and rolling, crimping it underneath and allowing that beautiful smooth surface to be created on top. This is what traps the gas in our loaf of bread. If we just have it loose, we're allowing the gas to escape. So, round it up. So, moulding from underneath. With the baguettes, what we want to create is a cylinder. So, all we want to do is flatten it out. Whenever we use um, doing bread making, we never use claws, we only use the flats of our hands. Okay, flatten it out, square off your ends, get the top edge, fold it down, top edge, fold it down, fold it down, sealing it against the bit on the bench, and then just tightening it up from underneath to create a little cylinder. So, we'll do that again, use the flats of our hands, square off. Top edge down, top edge down, top edge down, seal, tighten. So this is telling the gluten which way we want it to go when we come into our final shape. We've scaled them, we've divided them, we've pre-shaped them. Now they need to go into what we call an intermediate proof, which is just a, a little bit of time, around about 10 to 15 minutes, just for them to relax so we can get them into their final shape. At this point, we need to make sure that it doesn't form a skin. We want to keep it protected, so we'd cover it with either a trolley rack, a cover, or a tea towel if you're at home. So our bread's had its um, intermediate proof. We're now going to put it into its final shape. So we're going to use a couple of things. We're going to use kush, which is just a heavy linen material that we uh, wrap uh, the bread in. That creates its own microclimate and giving it the bread, uh, retaining the moisture and allowing it to prove uh, without forming crust. Or we can use a cane basket, which we call a benetton. So let's start with the kush. We'll start with our... 650s and we're going to turn this into a Vienna. I want you to imagine that this has a divided into quarters, okay? You're then going to get the two top corners and fold them in. Turn it around, get the top two corners, fold them in, fold in and then fold completely over, sealing on the bench. Then you're going to tighten it up and getting this tightness in the dough is what helps you create the final um, shape. If it's too slack it'll there'll be too much sideways movement. So push to about the halfway mark, pull to the halfway mark, push until it's nice and tight and then we can go and place it in our couche. So again the Vienna, so bring the corners in bring the tip in, turn it around, bring the corners in, bring the tip in, fold it in half, seal it, rub this part and this part of your uh, palms along the bench and that creates the points. 
Okay. Don't pull out when you're moulding the bread. Actually push in and you'll create a nice fat middle with, on, in the bread. And then it's a beautiful torpedo shape. Place it on the couche. Small fold, and that's where our next load lot go. Okay. So, corners in, point in, turn it around. Corners in, point in, fold in half, seal on the bench. Push and pull until you get a tight skin. Always moulding from underneath, never mould bread from the top. Place onto your couche. Now she's had her final shape, what we do is we'll just tuck her in and then place her for her final proof. Our next shape we're going to do is we're going to go into um, couche again, so we'll just make sure we've semolined the couche, make sure that it doesn't stick. This also gives your bread a little bit of texture when it comes out of the oven, so you've got that slightly coarser grain on the outside. So all we do is we square off our ends. We take the top edge, we fold it about a uh, third down, push, creating a bit of tension, then we grab the edge again and slowly bring it down. This creates a cylinder. Okay. We don't have a fat middle and we don't have pointy ends and this will create more of an even loaf. Flatten out, square off, tension, tension, tension and tighten. Place in your couch. You can make a song out of that. Tension, 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 tight. Tension, 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 tight. <laughs> when I place my bread in the couch, I always put it seam side down so I know where the seam is. If you put the seam up when it goes in the oven, it has a tendency to open up on you and crack. So with our Benettons, these are cane baskets. This is more traditional. We want to we just give a light sprinkle of semolina a little dust of flour, just to get those rings. And then we just round up our loaf, just like we did before, and so we can get nice tight wool out of it. Okay. Once we've got a nice tight round ball, we then place it upside down in our Benettons. This is how we shape a baguette. Now there are many, many different ways of shaping a baguette. This is just the way I do it. Once again, no claws, only flats. So we just pat the dough out slightly. Top edge, I bring it about three quarters down, sealing it. Turn the loaf around, top edge, all the way down to the bench this time, sealing it off against the bench. Tighten it. Don't worry about length at the moment. This is where we just get tension in the dough. Okay, once we're happy with the tension, we then place our hands in the middle and slowly bring it out to the size that we want it. Place it in our couche, and we do that again. So, flatten out, top edge down three quarters, turn it around, top edge all the way down to the bench. Seal it, tension, shape. Now you notice that I haven't got any flour on my bench at the moment because if I get too much flour, the doughs will start to slide and it won't get the tension that we need inside our dough. So once we get them into their final shape, we now let, need to let them prove. Now this can be done a number of ways. We can either retard it, which means we slow down the yeast and we extend its fermentation time, or we can just leave it at room temperature and it can prove at its own rate. I like to refrigerate this four degrees and then I will give it around about six to eight hours at around about 18 degrees for its final proof. What this will do is it will allow more flavour to develop, a slightly sour profile will come through and we'll get also get, because of the low temperature proving, we'll get slightly blistered on our skin on the outer, on the outer surface of our loaf of bread.